Optimizing Telehealth, the premium resource for evidence-based strategies to enhance telepractice today. Brought to you by the Telebehavioral Health Institute. Enjoy this excerpt from the latest episode. To access the full episode and to get your continuing medical education and continuing education hours, visit us at telehealth.org. So we're going to talk a little bit about telehealth around the world. There are international teams that have much to teach us about using telehealth. And some of these international interprofessional lessons are the best. I'm going to give you one example. One is a U.S. and Italian-based study by a number of professionals that the study is called Mindfulness, Compassion, and Self-Compassion Among Healthcare Professionals, What's New? A Systematic Review. I'm uh, reticent to pronounce the names of these clinicians, I mean these researchers. They're rather difficult, but I'll give it a try. Uh, Conversano, Siacini, Oru, Di Giuseppe, and Jemig Ani, and Poli. Right, so six researchers got together on this team to produce this. And what they're looking at is mindfulness in us, in the clinicians, okay? The publication is Frontiers in Psychology in 2020. This is a very recent article, and the information is available in our materials. And what they did is look at 58 studies that looked at mindfulness intervention, compassion, fatigue-related treatment programs for clinicians. And they came up with a combination of a structured mindfulness and compassion cultivation training that may enhance the effects of interventions and limit the variability of intervention protocols. This idea of limiting intervention protocols is crucial in telehealth because as you know, we can, with our licenses, serve many different types of people, but need to know what the literature says about any group that we want to work with. Let's say spina bifida children, as Dr. Williams, or maybe it's people with dementia or some other type of cognitive impairment or ADHD children. It doesn't matter what you look for. Strongly encourage you to go look at the evidence base for telehealth and find yourself some articles because you will see that there are intervention protocols that already have been tested that you can include. And frankly, you need to be including those in your documentation for the work that you do and not just pinging around with the usual when you're doing telehealth. Try to get some evidence base behind what you're doing and document that. So let's say Jorgensen and Peterson, 2019 you know, said this and that, and I'm going to do that because of this particular client or patient here that I'm working with. Optimizing Telehealth is brought to you in part by Cybooks, your one-stop shop for telebehavioral health technology. Learn more. Visit them at cybooks.com. P-S-Y-B-O-O-K-S dot com. So back to mindfulness. It's been defined as the awareness that arises by intentionally paying attention in the present moment and in a non-judgment way to one's own flow of experience. Okay, that's Kabat-Zinn, 2003. So what the study did was looked at, what the, the researchers that I'm quoting looked at studies that combined this mindfulness in with compassion cultivation training. And they called this mindfulness-based stress reduction appropriate for us. And some of the benefits are that increases emotional regulation, enhancement of cognitive control mechanisms, lower reactivity to stressful situations, so our own nervous systems can be moderated with just a few minutes of mindfulness training for ourselves. And then we ourselves can also be more able to judge situations objectively. That meta-awareness and shift in perspective of ourselves and can influence the difficulties that we face when we're doing things like processing morally relevant situations, sort of that moral fatigue that I talked about earlier, and the stimuli that comes with this that then can lead to finding a, a moral action, choosing and encouraging a moral action, not only in our clients and our patients, but in ourselves as we're trying to help guide people. Okay, so there are many moral challenges that are faced by clinicians. And so one of the options can be not so visible, you see, so we don't have a clear path. We really have to choose and it uh, gets difficult. So we're going to shift now to talking about competencies. And the, there's an article on competencies that I'm the lead author on that I make available to you here at this URL, telehealth.org slash blog slash an interprofessional framework for telebehavioral health competencies. And in that article, we, fairly large interprofessional group, looked at seven different domains, identified five different domains within those domains, 49 telebehavioral objectives, 
146 teller behavioral practices that are otherwise known as competencies. So I want to encourage you to look at those. They come in three categories. We have three columns at the end of that article, novice proficient and authority, and the licensed professional is the proficient one. So as you measure yourself against those, do a self-assessment and write it down. You are competent in this and this and this, and maybe not so competent in something else, and then go out and get training for that. See, so the, the domains are, the seven domains are clinical, that of telepresence. How can we be experienced as a fully embodied human being here on the internet and also relate to other people as they are real people here on the internet? How we project ourselves. Technical issues, M health and apps, mobile health and apps, ethical and evidence-based information, legal and regulatory issues, practice development. So that's just an introduction to the competencies in the field. And what we're talking about here today has mostly to do with the technical area that I've just identified and a little bit of the clinical, how do we relate? How do we present ourselves? So those three areas out of the seven are the ones that we're talking about today. So I'm presenting this to you so you can orient yourself and say, wait, okay, there are seven domains and now we've just touched on three of them. So if you go look at the article, you see how many others you may want to put in your own repertoire. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the latest episode of Optimizing Telehealth, your premium resource for evidence-based care. To access the full episode and to get your continuing medical education and continuing education hours, go to optimizingtelehealth.org.